be prepared for rain. Edward Melvin Shad was born in Butte, Montana on June 18, 1917, during the height of the copper mining boom, which drew thousands to this western city from around the world. And not just miners, but all kinds of entrepreneurs, businessmen, and workers to support the mining community. Even shoe salesmen, like Ed's father, who had come to Butte alone several years earlier, came to Butte to take advantage of the growth and prosperity of the city. In 1917, Butte had almost 100,000 inhabitants and was the largest city not only in Montana, but in the whole area between Minneapolis and Seattle. And it wasn't just the largest, but also the richest, thanks to the wealth of copper beneath the earth. When Ed Shad was born on June 18, 1917, the United States was preparing for World War I. War had been declared on Germany back in April, and on June 6, all stores and saloons in Butte closed so that all men could register for the selective service. June was also a month with two of the greatest mining disasters, mining fires, seen in Butte's history. Ed Shad was born to Edward Michael Shad and Sylvia Egan. He was an only child, although his parents had a son a year and a half earlier that had died at birth. When Ed was born, the three of them lived in the heart of Uptown Butte in a brand new apartment building, the Tripp and Dragstead Apartments, one of the finest in Butte and close to where Ed's father went to work at the shoe store, just four blocks away. Up in Butte, we lived in a called Tripp and Dragstead. It was an apartment house. All the years I lived there, we lived in this one apartment house, an old brick building. It was big for those days, I guess. They lived on the ground floor in apartment number 104. Although the Shads and Butte were only three, they enjoyed extended family from Ed's mother's side. Ed's father's family was all back east. Ed's mother, Sylvia Egan, was born in Butte, and both of her parents, as well as numerous uncles, aunts, and cousins, resided in town. I can remember a couple of things. Well, one like Christmas. It was Christmas Eve, and, and I had a little friend up in one of the other apartments, and, and so we go up to visit him for a few minutes. Of course, it was pre-planned, you know. And while we're gone, Santa Claus comes to our house. And then he comes down to our house, and Santa Claus goes to his house. Well, of course, I always remember that. And then once we had an earthquake, and, and I don't think Montana's noted for earthquakes, but it really shook that building. Just really shook it. And my mother and I both frightened, and I think we ran out. And I remember my dad was doing some book work. And he didn't move. Dead and, you know, uh, so earthquake. And I can remember that. But I can't remember really too much from you. Of course, it was up there that uh, it was on the 4th of July, and he belonged to the Elks. Oh, I can remember one thing. He belonged to the Elks, and, and they'd have a fair fiesta every year. And I can remember, I don't know how old I was, maybe seven, I hope not much older. And he was running a raffle booth. And they had this dog up there. And I don't know why. I wanted that thing so bad, see. So he ended up just taking it off the shelf and giving it to me, you know. No one was around at the time. But yeah, oh, well, I wanted that ball. And it was come to think of it, you know, when I was whatever age I was, I was a little old, it seems like, to me now, to want a doll. I think you remember my dad, really, not too much. I, I used to get out the shoe store once in a while. And, uh, well, we, we, we didn't do much. He worked six days a week. Most days, I mean, it was no 40-hour week, you know. And Sundays, we always went for a drive, you know. And there was no way to drive. I mean, God, it was uh, a mining town, dirty old town, as I remember. The Shads in Butte had a nice car to drive around in. Ed's father had a 1926 Nash sedan. It may have looked something like this. 
Or we just take a ride in the country. If my, my dad knew a place out some farm and he loved buttermilk. And I can't stand buttermilk, but we'd go out there and we'd stop at this little candy store. My mother was like me. She liked all the junk candy, you know, like the little uh, really dogs that I'd get. You might call Juji Fruits now, but they used to be dogs. And she'd buy candy bananas. She could spend 15 cents and have a whole bag full in those days. So she'd get a whole this junk and she and I'd eat it and then we'd dry it out. No, he didn't see it in the farm now and then, you know, and then we got this place and he'd get a fresh buttermilk and this was it. This was Sunday. You didn't go to church or your family wasn't religious? No, they, they weren't. No, my dad had been a Catholic from, you know, his childhood and back in Illinois, but I don't ever remember going to church. Never. And the condo was about 10, 10, 15 miles. That's the only became famous because we had the Conda Copper Company, which became probably the biggest copper company in the world, was there. And we used to get down there and they had a great big pool. And I don't know how big it was. In my mind, I, it was the biggest pool I ever saw. Probably isn't, you know. But they did have one thing that you don't see many times. They had like a roller coaster. It went way up high. And then these little things that you sat on that had wheels and went down a track and you go right into the water. Nice. Yeah, but you're going in. Yeah, you're actually you going in. You're wearing a suit. Oh, yeah, you had to be wearing a suit. In fact, it was in that pool that my grandfather had uh, decided to teach me to swim. So he chose me. How old do you think you were then? Five? So, probably. Probably three to five. Do you remember that, or is it no, no, told to me. I don't remember that at all. But that, uh, that was the big, that was the big spot. Going down to Grayson was the name of the pool, and then the corner. Life is not a highway strewn with flowers. Till it holds a good Life for Ed changed dramatically at nine years old when his father died suddenly. Here's a thought. Yeah. Well, yeah, my dad died uh, up in Butte when I was uh, about nine. And uh, so then my mother and I came down to California. And, and uh, her mother, who had been from Butte, had already come down. Mm -hmm. And she and uh, my grandfather lived here. Is that why you came down? Because you had people to stay with? Right, right. Yeah, because my, my, my mother had nothing really to hold her in Butte. She had that uh, business, which she liquidated. That was a shoe store, was it? Yeah, four time shoe store. And I think he made, uh, you know, good money there for those days. But her liquidation wasn't any, you know, big amount of money. But nevertheless, she sold out her interest back to four time. And we came down here. And then uh, uh, we were living with uh, my grandmother and grandfather. Ed's father died on July 5th. Because July 4th fell on a Sunday, Butte was celebrating Independence Day on Monday, July 5th. With it being the 150-year anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, festivities in Butte were especially vibrant and prolonged, lasting five days and culminating in a firework display on the evening of July 5th when Edward Michael Shad died at age 39. Then they had a big deal going on the 4th of July one year, and he took me to this. My mom didn't come, I don't remember why. Then she came and picked me up, took me home, and he went to fights. They had a prize fight going on, and it was at the fights that he was stricken and died. You know? And you were nine then? Yeah. They took him to the hospital. He died in the hospital. My mom went up to the hospital, but that's, it was just like, uh, I would say, an hour from the time he was at the uh, prize fight match and dead. And uh, he had had uh, all basic lung problems all his life. That is what he died of. He died of uh, urine poisoning from kidneys. When your father passed away, uh, I, I can remember that, I, you know, naturally I was sad, but I it was like disbelief, you know, that he was gone. But unfortunately, and I think this is true of most people, you don't appreciate what you've lost as a child. Even with my mother, and I was 16, you, you, 
you had that regret. But uh, now, like when Helen lost her mother, this is a blow and something she will never forget because she grew up, she was an adult, and knew her mother well, and now a big loss. I, unfortunately, I don't think the loss of my mother and my father was uh, as emotional to me as it should have been had I been older, you know. After his father's death, Ed Shad left Butte, Montana, never to return. He and his mother moved to Los Angeles and lived with his grandparents, Dennis and Kate Egan. Ed Shad lived the rest of his life in California. <laughs> 